Can we make a start, please? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I think it's 7 o'clock. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this evening's planning committee meeting at Working Borough Council. I'm Councillor Chris Bowering, and I'm chairing the meeting tonight. I'm the vice chairman of the committee. Councillor Tim Holton is the chairman, but he's not available this evening. So that's why I'm doing his job for him. Um, just before we start, um, a few uh, notes. Um, we have a PA system here. Um, please ensure mobile phones are off or silent. There's no fire drill planned this evening. The proceedings are filmed and will be available on the WC, WBC website. Uh, can I now introduce the officers in the committee? So, members of the committee, please can you give me your name and award? Sorry, Councillor Ross, please. Councillor Angus Ross representing Brookie and Without Ward. Uh, Wayne Smith representing Hurst. Malcolm Richards representing Norwich in Wigan Town. Okay. <laughs> it's you. I'll put it up. Councillor Chris Barry and Kevin Lewis Ward. Councillor Bill Sohn representing Long Ward in Woodley. Councillor John Jarvis representing Typhon Ward. And I'm Carl Warren representing the Bullish and White Gates. Thank you. We're supported as advised by a variety of professional council <laughs> officers. Uh, Starting on my right, would they introduce themselves, please? Thank you. I'm Callum Wynum, I'm the clerk to the committee. I'm Mary Severin, I'm giving you good advice tonight. Um, Colin Crowley, the yes, steel manager. Judy Kelly, my ways. Thank you. And the planning officers credited to tonight's applications are sitting on. Yes, there they are. But they're both, um, they'll be introduced when presenting their applications. Uh, so to, 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 to my left and right of the borough council to the public committee. Uh, this is a quasi-judicial committee with formal set procedures and contact. Firstly, the planning officer will present each application. Following the planning officer's presentation and the comments, um, there are no speakers tonight. So following the presentation, the planning committee members will consider, question and seek clarification for the application and hopefully reach a decision which may or not agree with the planning officer's recommendation. Finally, a reminder that the role of the local planning authorities to determine any valid planning application using local and national planning policy. Our role is not to suggest alterations to schemes, whether they're a good idea or needed, whether they're too costly, or whether they, there are alternative uses. Thank you. So we go on to the agenda for this evening's meeting. And the first item is apologies for absence of uh, Apologies submitted by councillors Rochelle Shepherd Bay and Tim Holton Chair. Thank you. Minutes of the previous meeting on page five. I'll go through the pages, members. Uh, page five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So no comments. Those are uh, hangers. Can I just make a comment that it appears that we are getting more extensive minutes, which is a, a conscious decision. It was a, it was a conscious decision uh, because of the application that was at the last committee. There was a lot of member discussion with it and it was felt that more detailed minutes would be better in that situation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the minutes are approved. Item 63, any declarations of interest? Yes, I am the applicant on item 68, Penfold, and I will be leaving before the uh, discussion of the committee. Thank you. No other declarations. So we move on. Uh, item 64, are there any applications to be deferred or withdrawn? No, Chair. Thank you. 65. It's the first application, it's application number 182410, which is a reserve matters application for the Arthur Garrison DL Department. Uh, Alex, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, and thank you, Chair, and good evening. Uh, I am presenting application 182410, which is the reserve matters application for 110 new dwellings and commercial force place. Uh, at the Arbuthnell Garrison SDO. 
The proposal relates to parcel U1 and V2, and the applicant is Crest Nicholson. The proposal relates to lands north of Biggs Lane and is located within the Armfield Garrison Strategic Development Location, SDL, and is the 10th phase of the development. The outline consent for the site was granted in April 2015, uh, and this established the principal development as well as the development parameters. This slide shows the Armfield SDL as a whole, uh, with some key infrastructure links highlighted on. Uh, for this uh, specific application, we are focusing on the northern section and in particular the Biggs Lane area. The application represents the tenth phase of development and I've highlighted it here in red on this plan. Some of the previous applications have also been marked on uh, and as you can see work is well underway within the SDL. Uh, this is an aerial photo of the application site uh, within Martin Red. Uh, again, as you can see, there is an existing garrison road that runs through uh, the middle of the site, and this connects onto Biggs Lane to the south uh, by way of a roundabout. To put a little bit more context to the surroundings, the areas marked in yellow are designated for housing. Uh, some of these, like the area to the south, uh, already have permission. Uh, and some are built out already, such as the first phase to the east, which is across the lake. The area marked in blue is the primary school site that also has permission. Uh, with regard to the outline, the parcels were considered to be residential in use uh, and mostly be three storey in height, apart from near Big Stain, where the outline allowed for four storey units. In terms of density, uh, there's actually a mix of high, medium and low densities allowed across the two parcels. Uh, essentially, uh, these are getting progressively lower in density the further away from Big Sky you go. Uh, so this slide shows the final submitted layout for the application. Uh, as you can see, the proposal is based around the central road that uh, approximately follows the existing garrison road already in place. Uh, the proposal is made up of a mix of units ranging from apartments uh, all the way up to four bed units, uh, which either front onto key infrastructure or open space. The site is accessed by the roundabouts uh, just on the bottom, on the bottom there, uh, with Big Slane to the south. In terms of complying with the outline stipulations, the proposal is compliant with the parameters. Uh, as you can see from the density plan, the proposal mimics the, mimics the outline parameter plan. Uh, and additionally, the proposal is compliant in terms of the story height parameters. Uh, moving on to the, the design of the proposal, the application proposes a more contemporary design uh, that is uh, similar to that of the first three phases of the SDL. The application is compliant with the design guides and works well within the, within the master plan uh, and also with the existing properties on site. I've added a few photos on this slide of the first phase of development which is located adjacent to the site. Uh, the application proposes something similar uh, with slight alterations in order to secure an individual identity for the application site while also remaining compliant with the master plan. Uh, with regard to the neighbourhood centre, this is located adjacent to the open space uh, as well as the junction of Big Lane and the Lakeside bus routes for ease of access. Uh, there are two commercial units proposed and these will be located within the ground floor of apartment block 5. Uh, these com commercial units are compliant with the outline and they are there to serve the northern section of the S SDL which is, and they're located adjacent to the primary school. Uh, on that point, given its location, uh, it being next to a school and residential areas, a condition has been proposed in order to restrict the fast food use of this location. In terms of access and movement, 
the site is accessed off Biggs Lane, uh, and, and the site includes the Lakeside Bus Route. The Lakeside Bus Route, shown in red on the plan, uh, is the road that runs in the centre of the site, and this will loop around, uh, loop around SDL serving the northern residential areas. Uh, it's probably worth noting at this stage uh, that there are put two conditions proposed in the members update uh, that, that firstly secure the bus stop locations and secondly secure parking management along that bus route. Um, regarding parking spaces, the proposal is compliant uh, with WBC standards. Uh, it actually exceeds the number of visitor spaces by six spaces. Uh, again, regarding policies such as garden sizes and parking, again, the proposal is compliant with both WBC policies uh, and the previously approved outline. Um, so, just to quickly go through the members update, apart from the two conditions which were discussed earlier, the only other change is the insertion of all the plans into conditions two, so that's the big, uh, the big grid of the table. Uh, therefore, it is recommended that the proposal is approved subject to the conditions in the report and the members update. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Alex. Let me know speakers are I throw it over to the members for comment. I guess. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just a point on the conditions of use for the two commercial premises. You say that it's um, likely that, uh, or you're making a, a, a condition that uh, it can't be used for takeaway. Can you tell me how long does that condition stand for, and could it be very quickly changed for a change of use? Should the case be that? How long that condition can be applied? Um, that should this be approved, that that condition would uh, be into perpetuity. Um, if they, if someone then decided to apply for a change of use, uh, it's likely you would have to come back, and the planning history would be read by the planning officer, whatever that may be. Um, so they they would read through this application, and they would hopefully see that it's for reasons, um, the reasons why we don't want a five bed. So we wouldn't expect to see that use there. It in couldn't future. be enforced. One hundred percent. Um, yeah, the condition can be uh, okay. enforced, absolutely. So, so just, uh, sorry, just to jump in there, so one of the reasons for it is to uh, try and encourage that that area of the site doesn't have actually any shops locally, so one of the things is to provide immunity for the shops, for the locals, for the residents. Um, two, it's next to the schools, so we're trying to prevent fake waste for health reasons. Um, and three, there might be parking issues with it as well, so you have people just dropping off parking on the bus route um, to run in to get to takeaway. So the idea is to try and stop that. That's not to say that in the future, if there was no uh, need for a shop. They couldn't find that need to, to run it. That somebody came in and, because obviously they'll go for the commercial interest of the site, but we'd have to assess it at that point. So it gives us control over it, and hopefully going into the future we can, we'll can know what's going on at the site. Um, so really it's just kind of setting out our position now. Um, that's not to say it may not change in the future. Yeah. Okay. I guess. Um, in a way, following on from that, Chairman, um, could Perhaps to just show us again on the plan where these units, commercial units, are. Yeah. Do you want the do you want the plan in terms of the SDL as a whole or on the layout? On the layout. Okay. Um, so they are in the ground floor of that apartment complex. Fine. Because uh, that links into my original question, which is. Where is the access to the school, or where will the access to the school be, and will there be any penetration from this development into the school, which would be good for the people living there, but would be an absolute attraction? Do we all know what uh, yeah. problems there are with parking at yeah. and around schools? I've got some other questions, but perhaps deal with okay, that. Okay, so first. just to deal with that um, question, there won't be any access from, so this, this boundary here pretty much forms the boundary of the primary school. Uh, but the actual uh, southern fence, I guess, of the, of the school kind of starts around here. So there's a sway in there. So there won't be any access there. But what we do have is a footpath and cycleway up its lane. So <coughs> the access to the school will come, if someone wants to walk down, they just come down and just go straight up into there. 
So what you're saying is <coughs> that there's no likely penetration or problem to the residents there. No, so, sorry, yeah, yeah, just to clarify that, so obviously we will own the school, well, the school will own the school eventually, but, um, so the fence will be controlled by us anyway, but at the moment there's no access, and it's probably about, I suppose about 300 metres or more to the school access, which has got a drop off, if we know the car. That, that's fine. O also, we've got the temporary use of the northern part of the site for a film unit. Yeah. Will that abut onto this development in terms of noise or nuisance there? Uh, no, there's actually a bit of a buffer uh, between the top of the site and the film studio. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I guess it's worth noting that that film studio is temporary, so um, mm -hmm. by the time these are up and running, it, we should be hopefully coming to the end of that film mm -hmm. studio. Mm -hmm. yeah. right, uh, and the last one, going back to this lakeside bus route, your condition doesn't presume that the buses will be running on there, does it? Because that is subject to later development to the east the the it is a bus route they 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 will be running on that yes. so there's no there's no guarantee that buses will run clearly but it, the bus route can't the bus can't operate until the, the yeah the sites to the north and the west yeah. are, are yeah. implemented yeah. This, this is the leopard which does in fact go to Bradwell as well as working and working Yes, so in the future it um, will run between the district centre at Arborfield and Reading uh, four times an hour and between the district centre and Wokingham twice an hour and once an hour to Bracknell. So, but it's, it's, it's going to be in three phases as the development builds up and as the roads come forward. Anything else? Anything else like this? Just perhaps a clarity of what you said that, that this is the existing uh, th um, route number three, is it? Level three. That's correct. Yeah. Three, which, three. Which goes around the, around the world before it gets to working. Yeah. <laughs> 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 There's a subsidy in us. Just a couple of quick questions. Um, on page 34, what is tandem parking? Does that mean against the curve and a straight line? Or what is that sort of parking, 27 spaces? It means the two spaces are back to back, so the front of one car would be up against the back of the next car. So it's linear, what are called linear parking, Absolutely. so you can't get the inside car out to be reversed. Exactly. Yes. And that forms part of the, the total of 224, it's not, it's not in addition to anything, it's part of that? It's part of that, yes. Okay. Uh, and just on the paragraph 60 of page 34, uh, parking spaces on the driveways have been set out to minimise vehicles that could potentially drop the driveways. That is avoiding that... Um, Linear style, is that what that means? It's, it's, it's avoiding people overhanging the car park, oh, the footpaths, sorry. So basically, you, you, you pull them far oh, away. You're, you're not going to have a car on well, the back end or whatever out on the footpath. Okay, thank you. And, and what, um, the width of the road, it's obviously, if, if it's potentially going to have a bus going through there, I assume it's going to be a, a fairly decent size. It's not going to be narrow so that people end up parking on the pavement. What's the width of the road? It's going to be a minimum of 6.5 metres. Uh, it's been tracked for two buses passing each other, so it does widen up a bit more on the corner just to get out of any movement. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'll come to anyone else with just a call. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've just got a, a, one question and a couple of comments to make, um, and I don't think you really answered the question. But um, apart from Parish Council say that um, they're moaning about the flat roofs. They're actually, they're not moving, they're saying it's okay, but they're saying the question is regarding the flat roofs, these have not been successful in other areas. Do you know what they meant by not been successful? Because, I mean, obviously that could be a million different things. Um, so, there's that. Um, and then a couple of comments. Nobody would be surprised for me to mention affordable housing. Um, it's obviously not the full 35% in actual housing, it's, it's less than that. But, um, and also it's the mix I'm a bit bothered about really, because it kind of, um, the mix is towards the cheaper and smaller end, and as it probably should be, but perhaps not to this extent. I think we need bigger, affordable homes as well for people, not necessarily just starter homes. Um, but also, uh, oh, and also, I think um, I think we must have about thirty-seven thousand houses on Gosh Ride now. I didn't know how many times it's mentioned. Um, <laughs> but uh, the interesting thing is um, they're actually giving us thirty-eight percent according to the figures: twenty-three percent houses and fifteen percent in view. So I'm just wondering why, how they made that mistake, basically, I'll assume it's a mistake. Um, yeah, so that's it, really, two questions. 
Um, so to start with the, the, the flat roof question, um, that's when they say there's not, I've been in discussions with them, when they say it's not successful, they are talking design-wise. Um, obviously design is very subjective. Um, we have it in the first phase and in quite a few of the phases and um, I think it works quite successfully. Um, and in terms of the affordable housing uh, and in particular the percentage, um, this is one part of the wider SDL, so this is one parcel. Uh, it's, they don't have to necessarily provide 20% uh, on site in each parcel, uh, so therefore you often get, particularly on larger developments, a parcel providing slightly more and then one down the line will provide slightly less. But at the end of the, of the uh, build out process, the proposal will be compliant with. Yeah. So on the mix, yeah, sorry, so on the mix, um, yeah, so that's that's uh, discussed with our housing team, um, so that's the need, so that's that's what they, they decide is, is, is works for us as a, as a authority, and that's why we have that mix. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mark, can I a very quick question off the bat? Uh, in one of the photos, uh, just before it says negative layout or something, uh, yes, that's it. Is that uh, the white line there? Is that just a painted white line, or is that a curb with a pavement? That's a footpath. It's, it's a what? It's the pavement, yeah. It's, it's, the it's curb. A, with a curb, but it's not a curb. Yeah, it's it's not actually, I, I couldn't tell from the photo where there's meant to be a shared area. Yeah, no, it's not actually painted, it just looks, it's quite bright. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, my friend, please. Uh, in the absence of anyone else wishing to speak, we'll go to the recommendation, which is on page 17. There's a modification to condition two in the men's update and additional conditions seven and eight. Can I see those who wish to uh, approve this application, please? And for those against? One last thing. Okay, that's, that is approved. Item 66 is an application for the Hot School in Pembroke Ward in Wokingham. The Hot School is an academy school for girls, uh, secondary school for girls. Um, have approximately 1,240 students. They have a planned increase of 30 students per year over the next uh, six years to accommodate an increase of 220 students with 20 in the sixth form. Um, that's independent of this planning process. This application involves a, an extension to an existing drama and arts uh, building in the south eastern, southwestern corner of the site. So 412 square metre extension. Uh, this is the existing plan. This is the proposed plan. Uh, it will be incorporated in the corner of the building, uh, incorporating external access. This is level access and independent access to the So it'll be fully uh, disability, dis disabled compliant with disabled types as well. Um, the external appearance of the building, uh, this is uh, viewed from the playing field, uh, a closer up view of it. This is looking from an existing car park out onto the playing fields. These are the playing fields that we're referring to. Um, this area here is, um, does involve the loss of any playing fields whatsoever. The application was referred to Sport England. They support the application. Um, it's effectively left over from the construction of a multi-use play area, which is located here. So you have your main playing fields there that are used for the main sports, football and the like. Um, and this is the all weather for pitch. This is the redundant leftover space. Um, there's no objections to the application. The proposal does in, involve an increase in uh, the requirement for parking. Um, the travel plan is 
provided with the application um, was reviewed by a council's transport and traffic officer who felt it to be acceptable uh, within the existing um, capacity of the school. Um, one submission was received from a ward member in relation to the provision of sprinklers. Um, the officer report does deal with that application in terms of um, being covered by building regulations. I'm informed that there has been since uh, recently been a, um, a motion passed in relation to um, sprinklers. I can attempt to answer that any of those questions if they feel arise. Um, the only other issue that we'd be concerned about is the um, visibility and the character of the area. This photo is from Reading Road. Um, you can see it in glimpses from Reading Road. It does fit within the scope, within the um, scale of the existing buildings and it's recommended for approval subject to conditions as specified in the report. Um, compliance with the travel plan being one. Um, and and a construction management plan being another pertinent um, condition, mainly to ensure there's no disruption to the existing traffic around the school and the existing operations mm -hmm. of the school. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Um, I think members have hard copy for council and should check the debates uh, point and uh, the resolution from council last year. Uh, no speakers, guests, so any comments? Uh, members? The comment from Imogen, uh, has she actually read the motion? I can't answer that, right? Well, because the motion is for extensions. This isn't a newly built school. So I, don't, I can't understand why she's raised it. Or am I missing something? Yes, I mean, there's the side issue of what she has raised is something that's still ongoing, not relevant to this application, but how we try and make that policy stick for schools other than those that are built and designed by the Borough Council itself. Um, my query or my, my confusion, if we look at the summary on page 51, the third paragraph uh, talks about an increase in the student numbers but that's nothing part of the proposal for this application. So I, I, I just don't see the relevance of that to what we're talking about, but perhaps I'm missing something. Um, so they have approval for um, increasing student numbers, as any school can apply to do so. Um, this application, it's referred to in this planning application because the application does involve an increase in floor area to um, cater for better facilities for planned, for, for the planned increase. Is this, is this like to attract people from outside the school? No, it's, it's planned in relation to the existing and future increase of the school population. So, Is your question in relation to whether or not it would be used for non-students? Yes. No, that's not my understanding at all, no. Sorry, thanks. I'm still confused, <laughs> it's uh, unless, uh, and this is not meant to be flippant, that these extra students are only going to go there to dance. <laughs> I do not see a relationship between adding new students to an application which is only for the erection of a single story extension to form a dance studio classroom. I do not see that the two are in any way connected and therefore shouldn't be part of this application. I, I think the attempt is to, to undertake a thorough assessment of the application that there is a travel plan that's accompanying this application. It takes account of planned increases. Um, there is additional floor areas um, proposed which does initiate a requirement for additional parking under the development plan. So this officer report is attempted to um, address all the factors. It, it does acknowledge there's an increase um, outside of and independent of this planning application but um, it's connected only insofar as there's an increase in floor area as part of the ongoing growth of the school. So, yeah. Sorry, I'll just jump in. Yeah, 
Angus, you're completely correct. It, the, it's all related to this application, the increase in numbers. I think as Simon was trying to say is that he's just trying to show that there, it's coming, um, as opposed to this increase is going to be the, the cause of the increase in students to 1420. But then 1420 is irrelevant to this application just for a classroom. So yes, I, I get your point. Are you therefore <coughs> saying that there's going to be another application to regularise that? It, well, or, there is a, it, or should this, the proposal have added to it the fact that this is covering that? I think, judging by the report, so Simon may, may be able to correct me, but there, there's an approval for up to 1420 students on the site. But the existing student numbers are 1,234. One mm. um, but yeah, so there is, a, there is already the approval in, in place, but they haven't done that yet. So. But, the, but I suppose, as Simon was saying, the travel plan covers the higher number, anyway. But yeah, the extension is not related to the increase in school numbers. I'm just going to try and make it clearer in the future. Sure. Mm. Well, so, yeah. Matt's question is not directly. That's your job. Yeah. <laughs> so, that Matt's is not directly related. I mean, it does say it's not related, but it maybe should be a bit more prominent than Malcolm. Yes, um, if this is to be approved, can I ask, or when is it expected to be built? Could we require it to be built during school holidays rather than when the children are all there? Or for obvious reasons, both noise and dust and all the other bits and pieces. Could it be done during holidays? Or is there a condition maybe? There's a condition for a construction management plan. Um, I, there wasn't any specific um, restriction in terms of limiting it to school holiday times because that may well extend the period of construction well beyond a standard construction of the, uh, six days a week. So it wasn't felt to do that. If it comes down to that, that would be part of the assessment of the construction management plan. It's also located on the edges of school buildings. Um, so this is all playing fields. Uh, these are residential houses. So the majority of the school campus is in this area here. So. The disruption should be minimal. And the vehicles and the material arriving would come there. From which part of that shape and through to that location? How would you get it? There's three entrances along here. Um, it's up to them to decide as part of the review of the construction. So they're unlikely there. to be mixed at the times when all the children arrive and school going away or take time or whatever. That, okay. That's part of the assessment of the management plan. There's a specific reference point in the position related to. Uh, how they'll make sure there's no disruption to arrivals and, and, and teaching. Which may be the noise and dust, but as you said, it's, it's all oh, Just to clarify that, it's kind of, it's self-governing anyway, because as a school you wouldn't want deliveries of, of any goods vehicles at the same time as children there, right. because it would be a nightmare to manage, so no construction from Oh yeah, I assume that would be the case, but sometimes yeah. it's worth the yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, Bill, can I just uh, ask you to go back to a photo? Uh, Show. Just that one. I'm trying to get there. Is it a bungalow that's alongside there? Is that's not interfering? I can't see that on the plan. There's, oh, sure. there's two um, caretakers houses oh, there. Right. So that's right that far away. Is it? Uh, I think what we're looking at there would be caretakers in there. I think maybe I'm not sure. Right, but there's yeah, no, no interference. There's, there's no, no actual. No, this looks at the photograph. It looks like it's quite. Um, yeah. That would be the photos taken from there, so I think it might be in there. Um, there's no, the closest residential, non school residential um, yeah. house is over here and yeah. down yeah. over here. What's well, important for entry? Cock. Thanks. <coughs> I just want to make a quick um, comment on what Imogen said. Really. I, I get the impression what Imogen's done is she's believed the motion as it was originally put in. <laughs> to council, and I believe that the, the little bit there about the A and B and talking about not extensions was actually your amendment. So I think perhaps she's forgotten that it was amended, um, and, uh, and, and clearly this rules this out, I think. Um, but I do, my question is, I guess this is for, perhaps a question we need to add, answer outside here, but what if this was a new school or a separate block? It still was still in the situation where this is a building regulation and not therefore a material consideration. So, you know, I guess I'm asking for a bit of guidance on that, not that it's relevant to this application. <coughs> yeah, it's quite clear from 37 and 38 that it's building regulations on measures. Yes, yeah, so it would be, so it's relevant really. 
Yeah, I mean that's correct. It's, uh, for new schools, we obviously insist. Uh, for our own new schools, we insist on them having uh, sprinklers. Um, but actually, there's no policy in place to do that. And there's no national policy, which is more important. And um, so, if a school wants to fight it, they probably could and, and would. Okay, thank you. There's no more comments. We go to the recommendation on page 52. There's no changes to the conditions in the agenda. So, those in favour? Was that an abstention? Okay. Uh, item number 67 is application 182261, 195 Reading Road, Road here in Pembroke. Uh, this is before us because it's an application for Council of Bullock Harry and Clark and signed on the day. The application involves the conversion of an existing single garage um, for the public purposes. It includes um, new fenestration to the front and new elevation. This is the existing garage. Um, the primary concern we have to be concerned about here is the provision of the sufficient provision of parking. This photograph shows the sufficient uh, parking and turning space for three vehicles. The application is recommended to approve it. Thank you, no speakers again. Any comments, please? No comments, go to the recommendation, page 71. No change to the conditions, those in favour? And uh, Councillor Ross, <laughs> voting. No, I have a question, it's too late now. <laughs> it's, no, it's not, I'm uh, counting it unanimous. Right, that is approved. And the last application is in house or MS. And bonds, Lodge Road first, 183350, and similar to the last one, that's here because it's a sitting member's application, Councillor John Jarvis, who's actually a member of this committee, has of course left the meeting. So that's page 79. Uh, is that you again, Simon? The application uh, involves the relocation of the driveway entrance on Lodge Road within the settlement boundary, but close to the um, countryside boundary. Uh, this is the existing plan showing the existing entrance. Um, it is proposed to be relocated to the centre of the property. It includes new um, flower bed front, new hedging behind, a new um, front fence. Uh, this photo illustrates the shared driveway and entry of the, the two properties. It will be relocated to this area here. Um, the council's trees officer has opposed the fence because it's not typical of the countryside edge or the settlement edge location. Um, my assessment in the members update <coughs> is, uh, refers to it being appropriate. Um, it is acknowledged that there's not a huge number of examples of fencing in that area, but it's still appropriate for the height and, and form. Um, there's also a condition attached to that members update in relation to the provision of landscaping, specific landscaping for that site. Um, Council's Highways officers reviewed the displays and um, raises no objection. Uh, it is acceptable on character grounds. It's recommended for approval. Okay, thank you. No speakers again. Uh, members? <coughs> uh, wait, yes, local member. Oh, sorry, I should come to you. You're the local member. Yeah, you're absolutely sure. Um, <laughs> Simon, can I ask the close boarding? The issue the tree officer had, was that with the close boarding on the roadside or with the boundary to the neighbouring property? The issue is with the fence here in its entirety. Um, if I were to review to view up and down, mostly up on to the north of the site, it's mostly just hedges or open in its entirety, so it's the introduction of, of, of wooden element that's the open in form. Because I agree with what's there now, which wasn't put up very long ago before the existing council that lived there. So that isn't very old. And it is a shame that we're taking out that chestnut fence to put in something uh, far less superior. Uh, my next question is this driveway. That is a really busy road. So, yes, that's it, just where your cursor is there. So that's at the point where it's going to be blocked. The new entrance is going to happen midway between further along. 
uh, am I to assume that that drop curve, the, the piece that is now going to be blocked up, if you take your cursor along, yep, yeah, that's it, go along, keep going along, that's going to be raised back up? Correct, there's that a condition that's requiring that. And, and that's fact, is it? That's definite. Yes. Because we've got a lot of situations around the borough where that hasn't been enforced, and it's very dangerous on a road like that to have continuous drop curves. But if it is, if it's part of the condition, fine. Condition six requires that um, within one month of the completion of the new access. Um, I, I read it differently. It's removed, but if that means reinstated to the, the original, then fine. It, 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 it's stand condition um, stopped up. I guess means returned. Um, mm. If up, back up. if we're clear on that, fine. Yeah, if I could just add, they would have to apply for a separate highways consent for any works on the public highway. So they'd have to submit the details to us to be um, assessed under the Highways Act and as opposed to the Planning Act. So should we've got them sort of to. <coughs> Aspects. So when you pick up that drop curve, you'll pick up the reinstatement of that one? Yes, absolutely. We'd expect to see all those details okay. on the plan. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Oh, you're here. Uh, right, uh, in that case, if I go to the recommendation on page 79, uh, with uh, an extra uh, condition seven in the members update. So those in favour. And that is approved by everybody to the council. Welcome to the meeting. <laughs> <laughs>